Hello and welcome to Know Your Representative, the program that bridges the visible gap between lawmakers and their constituents. I am Maria Olasha Inde. We'll take a short break and we'll be back soon. Stay with us. The task of the leaders is to get their people from where they are to where they've not been. How do we hold our leaders accountable in the business of lawmaking and representation? The mandate that you have given to us is not abuse in any way. The primary purpose of government is to ensure the welfare and security of the Nigerian people. The constituency project had noble intentions and they still remain the most veritable tool. Do they really know their representatives at the states and national assemblies? Our people, they don't have water, they are suffering. They, they only drink water from where they fall. For the current one, the intent assembly, I don't really know who is in charge. From the mountaintops to the deepest valleys, we're ready to go an extra mile just to show Nigerian your constituency project. Know your representative with Maria, bridging the visible gap. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, the program is still Know Your Representative with Maria. And I have here with me the DG of NILDS, that is the DG of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Professor Abu Bakr Suleiman. Prof happens to be my lecturer way back, 97, 1997, 1998. So you can imagine we've come a long way. Prof, you're welcome to Know Your Representative. Thank you. So how does it feel seeing most of your students, not some, doing well in their field of endeavors? Uh, just like uh, a parents that uh, give birth to a child or children, and uh, you see such children growing up, not just growing up, they're growing up very well, physically, uh, they are displaying some level of intelligence, they are doing well in school, they are doing well within their mate, within their peers, and then I grow to be greater in life. Mm. Such a parent will feel fulfilled, mm. you know, you are, you'll be happy, you'll be glad to have seen such children, you know, uh, upliftment in life, their career growth, progressing. So I think it's the same thing. It teaches like a parent, mm. it teaches like a mentor. And if you have tutored your student very well, I mean, you assess them to her and she passed very well from the university or from the school. And all of a sudden, she's into, you know, um, outside world, yeah, doing very well. Uh, see him on television, see him everywhere displaying, you know, a level of intelligence and you know, accomplishment. You feel fulfilled. So I think I'm happy, I'm delighted for the kind of job you have been doing. Uh, yourself and some other people that uh, I can't start mentioning their names. Mm. You are in hundreds. Mm. I think as a teacher that I was and I'm still up to today, I think uh, when I see you people everywhere, I see you, I think I'm, I feel the light child. My current GM of uh, our democracy radio was my student too. Mm. Quite a lot of my staff that work with me here used to be my students too. So I'm happy. And you yourself, you have been working with us uh, in this institute. You know, if you have not been doing well outside there, perhaps we will not even get to engage to work with us there. So I think it's, uh, you are doing very well. Just I pray you keep it up. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. So let me congratulate you on your re appointment as the DG of um, NILDS. Thank you. So wait, looking back, you did you came in in 2019, four years gone, now you're in your second term. What will you say has happened to NILDS, the changes that you've experienced in NILDS? My, my accomplishment in the last four years, mm -hmm. talking about my uh, legacy, talking about my scores cash mm -hmm. in the last, you know, I've, uh, I've done a lot of uh, diagnosis, X-ray, trying to see so many. But I think one thing that is clear now that I can just tell you that we are conducting this interview in this edifice, mm -hmm. an edifice that I met on ground at this stage, an edifice that I met on ground that was to be commissioned two weeks to my, you know, 
assumption of office and a lot of things you know crept in to serve as an impediment i've been able to overcome that impediment those constraints today here we are mm. so one of my achievements you could say kudos to my predecessor who started the whole thing is that i got the edifice up to the stage commissioned by the former president get the edifice furnished and here we are we opened for this uh, permanent site i think it's one of the scorecards and answers. yes i'm fulfilled to be the one to, to have commissioned and to be the first director general to have even you know start working here that among other things mm. but again to put it mildly i met an institute with four departments mm -hmm. and now we have 11 departments mm -hmm. we are growing mm -hmm. i met an institute with enrollment of pg students at 60 70 now we have enrollment in a year of more than 100 I met an institute with a lot of grudges, stagnations, and career progressions of staff. Today, I don't think, yeah, there are, there are be some minor, minor, you know, minute issues there mm -hmm. and there, but... Not as so, bad as what you no, meant. No, no, it wasn't that bad. People that I meant that uh, were not promoted, we got them promoted, you know, through due process. Mm -hmm. People that were on contract, we got them confirmed oh, through due so. process people that had issues of training. Almost all my staff have been trained outside the country in the last four years, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of career progressions, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, capacity building, mm -hmm. in terms of training the trainer. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people of substance now. And we have a couple of other reforms that were introduced. We have academic advisory board, something akin to what obtains in the university has seen it. We have uh, some new condition of service for the institutes. My staff now the rise to be professors in the institutes. Mm -hmm. My staff could go on sabbatical. That was not the practice before. Mm -hmm. My staff could go on maternity leave. That was not the practice before. My staff could go on leave of absence. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are there now, uh, working with the speaker, working with the, some you know, senators working with some other agencies too. We have, we have that leeway to say, you can go and come back. Mm. Go and make impact there and come back. So that was not the kind of practice, you know. That you met. That I met on ground. So now we've opened the institute. And before I came on board, the capacity building aspect of the institute in terms of trying to enhance the, 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 the capacity of legislature and parliamentary staff was a bit limited to the center then. But now I could tell you that in the last four years or four and a half years, we have permeated onto the subnational parliament. That almost 22 parliamentarians, I mean, state assemblies now, mm -hmm. they, 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 they fall into what you call a I mean, partnership. They are partners at the institute. Okay. We trade them every year through the assistance of our donor agencies. Just last two months ago, uh, seven speakers of state assemblies were in, were in Berlin, they were in Brussels, you know, for training and uh, capacity. Uh, they were there to understand the what of things there. They were there to see whether they can learn what two things there. They were there on the, the kind of, you know, bilateral exchange with those, uh, their counterparts there. So who funds this? And the trips is it nudes? For the for the for the recent one in Brussels and uh, Berlin, it was a kind of partnership between the corner and the state tongue, okay. the German donor agency and Nils. The chunk of Brown's uh, trip was uh, done by by was funded by cars okay. with uh, a kind of counterpart funding from Nils, you know. But the chunk of it what comes from the done by uh, by car. So I think quite a lot of innovations have been introduced. Mm -hmm. Today we have democracy reduced. Mm -hmm. you know. Today we have platform where Senate President and Speaker could reach out to Nigerian people you know, through the parliamentary lecture series. Today we have series of trainings for parliamentary staff. 
within the last four years, we have spread more than 3,000, you know, aids to National Assembly, you know, parliamentarians. We have percolated down to state service commissions of state assemblies. A lot has happened here. In your capacity as the DG of NILDS, I'd like to know your relationship with the National Assembly. Recently, you held a retreat for both the leadership of National Assembly and um, for the senators as well. So what informed this? Is it part of the Institute's function to train those at the National Assembly? Our Institute is the only statutory body okay. in the country established by an act of parliament to train legislature, okay. to train democratic actors and institutions. Mm -hmm. So when we train, retreat is about training. Mm -hmm. Retreat is about availing them opportunity of knowing what they should, ought to have known, mm -hmm. what they should know. Mm -hmm. So it's for that our mandate to train them, mm -hmm. to organize capacity building, to organize refresher courses, to organize induction program. We did inductions uh, April, early this year for new assembly members at this national level and uh, we just thought look beyond that induction which was a mass assemblage mm. of new parliamentarians uh, in Nigeria we should be able to now identify some of the major government policies that our parliament our lawmaker need to know and that was why, before going into the, the, the Senate retreat, we now look at, look, let us bring the leadership together. of the National Assembly together. Let them envision what they want to do. Let them sit down together with their counterpart from Senate and the rep member. Let the past, you know, presiding officers, both from the House, mm. former Senate President, the former Speaker, mm. let them sit down with them share experiences, experiences with them, idea with them on how to move this country forward through legislation, through representation, and through oversight. That informed the first retreat in Rio, mm. which was purely for the leadership. And it was very profound. A lot of ideas came up. A lot of mistakes perhaps that have been made in the last few months have been identified. A lot of issues were identified and we tried to now come up with what will be an agenda from the leadership position. Mm -hmm. So after the first retreat in Oyo, that which was purely for the leadership, mm -hmm. we now look, okay, there are some fundamental policies and program of government that our legislature, before they even sit down to make law, they need to make those laws and perhaps do the oversight from an informed position. What are those issues? Fundamental of this issue are issues that borders on economic reform. Fundamental are issues that borders on fiscal policy. Fundamental are issues that borders on tax, you know, regime. So we identify these. Hence, the second retreat for Nigerian Senate, and it, we try to bring in policymakers, Minister of uh, Finance, Finance, the Minister of National Planning and Budget. We try to bring the chairman of the task reform. We try to bring in the chairman of Federal in La Refenu. You know, practitioner, academia, to judge all with our lawmakers on how they could address most of these issues. How they could support, you know, uh, Mr. President in his renewed agenda or renew up agendas of trying to transform this country. The, the retreat was successful. It's, it's just our responsibility to do that, and we did it very well. It was applauded, and uh, Nigeria will not know the words or the impact of such, you know, venture now until they see the kind of uh, bills, law, and the 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 patriotic zeal with which the, the parliamentarians will conduct their oversight. Okay, let's look at representation, which is the most important part for the lawmakers for me, because that's where they get to have interactions with their constituents who voted them into power to, where, to their seats. Because when it's time for election and they go back, all this we are saying now, we're just speaking grammar, when it's time for elections, they now go back to those constituents to tell them they will do this, they will do that, they will do this, they will do that. So you know that in some areas you go to, in terms of representation, you have good roads, 
water, the minutes of things we don't have, and there's hunger in the land. So in which area are they doing this represent? Meanwhile, they have zonal intervention projects. And when you tell them, they say, fine, they don't collect the money physically. So in which area are they putting these projects in the zonal intervention projects that even the constituents, the masses, are not feeling what they are doing for them? Their impacts, that's the word. The masses are not feeling the impacts of the things they're doing. Construct road. The must it's not the functions of the parliamentarian to construct, but to through legislation mm -hmm. facilitate mm -hmm. development. It's your people. But the question is the people themselves, do they tell the middle? These are practical things that we see on many places. We must change the narrative, we must change it, we must change our attitude to governance. The people, Nigerian people themselves are issues. Electorate are issue too. And we need to, when we blame those in government, we should go back to the electorate too. People in government. We should go back. Our orientation, our value system needs to change. But let's now look at the infrastructure, the deficit. Yes. Fine. You, you don't, I can say, for, you, I can say you don't have a choice because you just have to balance it. You have to give the physical cash what you can give so that you don't steal. What you can give to the people, you give to the people. But now the infrastructure deficit, there's a little moment that you see the school, I mean, you have seen that video, Prof, and there's someone representing that local government. There is no roof. The students are learning under that kind of condition. They know they the man, to just go there. The man that's representing them, yeah, blame him. Mm -hmm. Blame the governor too. Mm -hmm. Blame the local government chairman. It's not just one person you hold responsible. You are talking of a state. Mm. What's the government of that state doing? You are talking of states. You have lawmakers in those states too. Blame them too. You are talking of a state. That's it. You are talking of a place that is the local government. The chair of that local government, what's he doing too? Don't just zero everything on the parliamentarians. The parliamentarians, they have less power. They have power to make law. They have power to oversight. They have power to move a motion. They have power to move a bill, to present a bill. But they have power of sanction. They don't control the police. On several occasions, when they even summon head of MDA no. and they refuses to come, nothing happened. Okay, so who do you blame when you put in a project, in a zonal intervention project, yeah. and the lawmaker is following up, but at the end of the day, they don't get to do that project? Who gets the blame? Who do not do it? The lawmaker should follow up. The lawmaker is so your agency is that your is your zona intervention, intervention projects, and the zona intervention project is done by an agency. You understand in your own name, mm -hmm. the lawmaker must follow up to the agency in ensuring compliance. And where the, the such agency fail, you understand you report accordingly. Where you now report accordingly to the executive, and they fail to take any measure against such agency, then leave that in the of public opinion mm. and you have done your own mm. but to step back to say i don't care mm -hmm. so that's not people will see you as a you're not performing yeah as an accomplice yeah. i think the third assembly need to do more is by coming up with not just the carrot to deal with agency they must come with stick where they need to whip this whip and they must get the buying of the legislature the executive to ensure that mdas comply where they fail to comply, the necessary punishment should be meted onto them. So I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. So is there anything NILD can do to enhance what you just said? We are, we are into training. By in the next two months, we are going to train, we are going to we are going to have a retreat for us of nine members. We are training committees, we are training some selected committees of National Assembly, State Assembly. In the course of our training, some of these things we don't want to impress on them. These are the way to go. This ought to take another climb. This is the best way to go about it. We don't we don't we don't hide anything for them. And I want to believe uh uh Stambul's Medina will see changes. You know, it's it's uh, uh, democracy is evolving, it's uh, you know, and to me we are better off than what we used to be in the past. So hopefully we get to learn, we get to know, we get to see things, we get to make a difference as progresses. So moving forward, what's the next phase for NILS? The next phase for NILS, I told you, is to consider what we have been doing before. Uh, as I said, we have a couple of trainings, program for state assemblies, for national assembly members, 
and uh, we have a couple of other for international you know, training for senators, for rep members. We have a couple of uh, programs for parliamentary staff, you know, both at national level and state level. And we have a couple of, I mean, uh, post-graduate programs ongoing. Don't forget, we have, last year we started a PhD program. Uh, just two days ago, I, had, I, had, I, I hosted the uh, VC of the University of Nigeria with his delegation. Uh, we have, last week we had Yaga, two weeks ago we had Black. We are into so many partnership, so many donor agencies, CSO and you. Two days ago, we had the Women Governance uh, uh, Roundtable. Round and by next week, we have quiz competition, national, you know, the grand finale of the quiz competition that uh, about five states, you know, uh, uh, are involved. We are part of the state, we are part of the SONA. The final one will come up on the system. Let's, 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 let's wait. We have a couple, a couple of programs. Uh, my staff were overwhelmed with a lot of programs and activity in different democracy in this country. In the answer to the capacity of Nigerian institutions and democratic institutions, we have a lot. We have a lot. Our challenge, which is the challenge of everybody, is funding. But again, give it to the donor agencies, the CSO. They are partnering with us, you know, to scale up both of these uh, programs. The Westminster Foundation, the CARS, the IAGAS, we are women. They are doing very well, and uh, with their support and with the leadership support, I think uh, in, the, in the next coming budget, uh, we hope to get uh, more funding uh, you know, to really uh, accomplish most of the outlined uh, work plan. So we have, we have quite a lot. Uh, the NUJ, your colleagues, too, we have training program for them. You know. In conjunction or in collaboration with University of Benin, the students that you produce from the institute, which certificates do they get at the end of the Of course, University of Benin certificates. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Oh. University certificates. Okay, so here is just like a center. Without, it's not just a center. It's an institute, it's I an know. It's an institute, mm. a partner, because mm. by law, we don't give degree. Mm. So that's why we partner with Benin. Mm. Because of Lokoja, okay. of Ofle, Lore, and uh, Okay, okay, so it's the school certificate. Yeah, right? yeah. Every when it comes to certificate, it will carry university. Every other thing carry university name, mm. university name. When it comes to certificate, mm. because they are the only qualified mm. institution by law that could award mm. certificates. Mm. Okay, so finally on this um, on this note, for the lawmakers, the new lawmakers has you know cut hard to sack some and bring in some. So would you have crash programs for them? since they missed the retreats? Let me just answer this question this way. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, some new lawmaker that just came in, we, it. Mm -hmm. we organized a special one for them. So let us let us absorb the litigations in the various courts. By the time we are done, we identify the new one that just you know survived uh, litigation that just came in. Then uh, we do the NIFO. Mm -hmm. Before we didn't have power to do that, and we shall do that. Mm -hmm. So I know you've been able to give the Nigerians where their own faults where they stand should, should change their mindsets. The parliamentarians, you are able to like, you know, you proved your point, I understand. So moving forward, what's your advice now to this 10th National Assembly? Well, we have a lot of issues, a lot of um, challenges. They need to support Mr. President, the executive, it, you know, uh, uh, I, I mean, in, 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 in uh, answering you know, security of our country, mm. in restoring peace in this country, in uh, reforming the economy. The economy is, is just not good. Nigerians are suffering. There is hunger and, in the land. Yeah, yeah. So, and um, we have a president that has come with a lot of commitment, a lot of zeal mm. to effect a change. But the executive cannot just do it all alone. Mm -hmm. He requires the support of this legislature. So, they can't afford to let down the Nigerian people. And with the kind of uh, the leadership, the speaker is not just the speaker of yesterday. The Senate president is just is an experienced person, mm -hmm. having been the governor for eight years, having been minister, mm -hmm. senator. Here we are now, Senate president. Mm -hmm. The crop of the principal officers, I think they are experienced people. The new one that have just come into, these are people that have shown that they have people's you know love at art. They can't just afford to support Nigerians. We trust in them, we have trust in them, and we believe 
they will support Mr. President in ensuring that what he, come, he terms his eight point agenda, you know, are actualized through legislation, intervention, through policy framework, through legal framework, and through, you know, commitment to ensure that the MDAs do the needful. So thank you very much, Professor Abubakar Sleeman, for coming on Know Your Representative. Thank you very much. The task of the leaders is to get their people from where they are to where they've not been. How do we hold our leaders accountable in the business of lawmaking and representation? The mandate that you have given to us is not abuse in any way. The primary purpose of government is to ensure the welfare and security of the Nigerian people. Constituency projects had noble intentions and they still remain the most veritable tool. Do they really know their representatives at the states and national assemblies? Our people, they don't have water, they are suffering. They, they only drink water from where they fall. For the current one, the 10th assembly, I don't really know who is in charge. From the mountaintops to the deepest valleys, we're ready to go an extra mile just to show Nigerian your constituency project. Know your representative with Maria, bridging the visible gap. Thank you for being a part of the program this week. Join me same time next week for another interesting edition of the program. For missed episodes, you can catch up on our YouTube page, My Base TV. Thanks for watching. I am Maria Olasha Inde. Stay safe and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>